but the root is is something that is uh, we think is this caged or confined masculinity that if men are experiencing these deep assumptions that are quite limiting and constrictive, it's going to hurt them and then hurt people, hurt people, right? They, they will hurt others and, and behave in ways that are troubling. So what, when we took a hard look at what is what are these deep assumptions, and we looked at some other research as well as the latest APA work and what we're seeing in the business world for that matter as well, is that the confined masculinity is really our conventional masculine, masculinity, and it's defined by separateness and limitation. There's mm -hmm. limited roles men can play. Uh, like the provider, the protector, and the conqueror. And then there's limited ways of relating that we're supposed to be consistently competitive, uh, always ready to battle. Uh, we're supposed to be stoic, you know, withhold our emotions. We're supposed to be dominant. And we're also supposed to be very self-reliant. We're supposed to be self-made men to the point of in isolation. So when, when this is our set of, 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 of options, quite a limited set, it, it, it ends up really, you know, hurting us as men. And then that spills out in, in, in kind of unhealthy ways to all those around us. Yeah. Uh, if I could, you know, I just want to, could I, um, cause I want to get into one particular piece of the definition. I'm going to read from the book for a second, just to kind of bring this home and really nail this down into our consciousness and into our community. Um, you know, confined masculinity focuses on a man's separateness more than on his sense of belonging. I mean, that's just a huge statement right there. For example, many confined men believe they should keep emotions to themselves, be self-sufficient, and show no vulnerability. Confined masculinity also has a fundamentally uh, fearful outlook, a mindset of scarcity and ever-present danger. Confined masculinity effectively puts men in a defensive crouch ready to snarl at perceived threats, uh, predisposed uh, to lash out and uh, struck with a distorted uh, view of their surroundings. Um, and that one piece of the definition that um, it brings it in almost a postural kind of physical nature is that crouch. Mm -hmm. um, and I was wondering if we can kind of unpack that a little bit, because when I read that word, I was like, <laughs> and I felt that it's not even just the concept. I was like, oh, my God, like, I definitely know. And I'm like, so I was wondering if you can um, just talk about Crouch a little bit, see, see where that takes us. Well, I'm so glad you picked up on that passage because that's one of my favorite passages <laughs> in the book. And I, yeah, we were trying to really explore what that, how this language does in, include an embodied uh, yeah. element. Yeah. And, and as Edward and I were talking about this, if you're always on the defensive uh, you're always ready for combat. You got to get your arm up. It's like you're stuck behind your shield. Like you can't yeah. see that much. Right. And, and then it, it, so we're really, and that corresponded to this inability to see the world as anything other than dangerous. And yeah. so there's no way of seeing a way to relate to others. And it's not about trying to best them. Right. Um, and so we can't see the opportunities to collaborate. We can't see the opportunities to play together nearly as much if we're in that, in that crouch no. Uh, and, and with a limited perspective. Um, and I mean, Ed, maybe you could share a story or two about some of the, you know, even the story you shared recently about the, the fellow and the way he in, interacted with his wife seated behind his desk. Uh, there's, there's, Ed has such great stories that, that speak to this topic. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that's a story of um, a man who read the book and um, was moved by it and decided to come into um uh, do some therapy. And uh, he told me the story that uh, he's a highly successful, uh, highly competent, capable uh, man who uh, is providing well for his family and so on. Um, but uh, in his marriage, he's sensing that there's uh, problems brewing. And um, he said, typically, he would bring things up with his wife. So he would invite her into his office. He'd sit behind his desk and she would sit in front of his desk. So it was more like a business transaction than an mm. intimate conversation. Mm. So uh, he said, after reading your book, I, I, I know we needed to have a conversation. So I invited her into my office. I set a chair um, so that we could sit and face each other. I took her hand and I said um, that um, I want to have a really important conversation with you about my love for you. And he also put on a rather inexpensive arm 
band. And he said, the reason I'm wearing this is because whenever you see it, I want you to know I'm devoted and loving to you. And every time I look at it, I want it to remind me how much I uh, love, feel love and feel devotion to you. And um, sh she thought he came dropped out of another planet. suddenly. <laughs> Right. Uh, and uh, <laughs> music so, your ears, right? <laughs> right. So a couple of things were happening there. It's it's what I refer to as a liberating um uh, a liberating masculinity moment. Sure. You know, uh, which uh and in that moment he changed the nature of the game. Yeah. Uh, he became vulnerable, he became intimate, he became open, he became um uh a, more accessible to her. Authentic. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, and it made a huge difference in uh, then they decided to go away for a week together which, uh, <laughs> I wonder what that was like <laughs> right uh, which was well overdue yeah. can I just and uh, I love that story and I, to me like the desk is like a shield and it, right. it kind of keeps her him separate from her and also prevents him from seeing her as an equal partner in their in the relationship right you know, he's got the power position behind the desk like a businessman and he, he, he put it aside and he could see her more fully. And so that's, yeah. uh, you know, he's not necessarily crouching, but sitting behind his desk. And so uh, that's a, to connect those dots there a bit, but it, it's.